FM 88.1 WHPR, Highland Park. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. When we join together like this, it helps to clear up all the doubts. When we join together like this, we welcome you to this humble house. When we join together like this, spread joy and peace, no need to pout. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow, don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow, don't let peace slip through your hands. People, tell your fathers, tell your sons, tell those you love and everyone. Don't ever stop when the immediate task is done. Disparity is on the run. Open your hearts up to the truth. Don't let their lies bamboozle you. Right here, right now, we're living proof. We're all defined by what we do. We're all defined by what we do. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. Set aside our differences and let us give love a chance. What we do will define tomorrow. Don't let peace slip through your hands. We share the same legacy, me and you, Muslims and Christians, even Jews. All of God's prophets brought the truth. I'm only here to spread the news. In the name of the Almighty Creator, the merciful, the mercy giving. Welcome to our program, Mankind is the Family of God. The focus of our program is Christianity's true founder, Paul, admits fabrication. I'll be quoting from what did Jesus, peace be upon him, really say by Mish'al ibn Abdullah. Quote, Christianity's true founder, Paul, admits fabrication. Muslims do not claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, true disciples, may the Almighty have mercy upon them, tampered with the Bible, but that others claiming to act in their names did so later on. This is attested to by the fact that the Trinitarian Church felt it necessary to totally obliterate all gospel manuscripts written before 325 AD, when they officially introduced the, quote, Trinity, unquote, to the world. This is why we find such serious contradictions in even the most basic of its teachings. For example, we are told that Saul of Tostras, Paul, is the author of the majority of the books of the New Testament. He is claimed to be the author of Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, chapters 1 and 2, and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2, Thessalonians, and 1 and 2, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and Hebrews. We would expect that such a pivotal character in the Bible and the author of the majority of the New Testament books to be able to keep his story straight, at least in such fundamental matters as how he became a Christian and was, quote, saved, unquote. However, we can find in the Bible a sworn affidavit by Paul that he is guilty of fabrication. Sounds incredible. Let's have a look. If we read Acts 9th chapter, verses 19 through 29, and Acts 26 chapter, verses 19 through 21, we will find that Paul was busy persecuting the followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, in Jerusalem, and dragging them from their homes to be tortured, killed, or converted, when suddenly, one day he decided to branch out and persecute them in Damascus. For this reason, he goes to the high priest asking for letters sanctioning such actions in Damascus. 
Why he would do this since the high priest of Jerusalem had no authority over Damascus remains a mystery to many. However, let us continue. Shortly after setting out to continue his evil work in Damascus, Paul is supposed to have, quote, seen the Lord in the way, unquote, and accepted Christianity after being a staunch enemy of Christians and having become famous for his severe persecution of them. Barnabas, mercy the creator be upon him, one of the apostles of Jesus, peace be upon him, then supposedly vouched for him with the other apostles, peace of the creator, mercy be upon them, and convinced them to accept him. Paul then went with all the apostles, mercy the creator be upon them, on a preaching campaign in and out of Jerusalem and all of Judea, preaching boldly to his people. Paul then appointed himself the twelfth apostle of Jesus, peace be upon him, in place of, of Judas, who had been tricked by the devil, as seen in his own books, Romans chapter 1, verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1, etc. The verses mentioned are, quote, And when he, Paul, had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was saw Paul <coughs> certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for the, that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him, but their laying a weight was known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. May the mercy of the Creator be upon them. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, took him and brought him to the apostles. May the mercy of the Creator be upon him, be upon them, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Peace be upon him. And he was with them, coming in and going out of, at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Unquote. This is from Acts 9, chapter, verses 19 through 29. Quote, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works deep for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. It's taken from Acts 26 chapter verses 19 through 21. Contradicted by, quote, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. May the mercy of the Creator be upon the apostles. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, mercy of the Creator be upon him, and abode with him fifteen days. 
but other of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Mercy of the Creator be upon him. Now, the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. Unquote. This is found in Galatians, first chapter, verses 15 through 23. With regard to the first two passages, Reverend Dr. Davies, in quote, the first Christian, unquote, says, quote, these assertions are not inconsistent with each other, but are damaging for another reason. They are contradicted by Paul himself in his letter to the Galatians, chapters 1 and 2, unquote. Reverend Davies draws attention to Paul's oath, quote, now concerning the things which I write to you, Indeed, before God, I do not lie, quote, which makes his account a sworn affidavit. He goes on to say, quote, this, to the story in Acts, this contradiction is disastrous. There never was a teaching campaign at Jerusalem and through all of the county of Judea, stated in Acts 26, chapter, verse 20. If Paul was unknown to the Judean communities, as he says, that he had undertaken no mission among them. In fact, he had never joined the Judean movement or even attempted to join it. He only saw Cephas and Jesus' brother, James, mercy of the Creator be upon them both. Even of the other apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, not to mention more ordinary believers, quote, I saw none, unquote, he admits. Instead of his having gone, quote, in and out of Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord, unquote. The Jerusalem community had not even known that he was there. Quote, they only heard, unquote. He tells us, quote, that he who once persecuted us now makes the faith of which he made havoc, unquote. But they never heard him preach in Judea, unquote. Reverend Davies concludes that, quote, if there is any portion of the New Testament that is authentic, it is Paul's letter to the Galatians. If we cannot rely upon this letter, we can rely upon nothing and may as well close our inquiry. But the fact is that we can rely upon it. The letter to the Galatians is from Paul himself and by every test is genuine. Unquote. From the first Christian, A. Powell Davies, Faustras and Chade. Pages 30 and 31. According to the narration in Acts, Paul was Paul saw his alleged vision, quote, straightway, unquote. He began preaching in the synagogues of Damascus. He built up a reputation through his bold preaching that amazed the masses. He confounded the Jews of Damascus. Many days later, the Jews tried to kill him, so he, he escaped to Jerusalem. He met Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon Barnabas, who introduced him to the apostles. May the mercy of the Creator be upon all of them for the first time. They were all terrified of Paul, but Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, convinced them to accept him. Now Paul and all of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, went on a preaching campaign in and out of Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of Jesus. Peace be upon him. However, according to the narration in Galatians, Paul saw his alleged vision, quote, immediately, unquote. He did not confer with, quote, flesh and blood, unquote, nor did he go to Jerusalem to see the apostles, Mercy of the Creator be upon them, but rather he traveled to Arabia, then back to Damascus. He mentions no preaching in any of these places. After at least three years, he goes to Jerusalem 
for the first time. It means only Peter and James, mercy of the creator be upon them, and no other of the apostles, mercy of the Almighty be upon them. He stays with them for 15 days, but once again, he mentions no preaching campaign, either with all of the apostles, mercy of the creator be upon them, with some of them or alone. He also has never been here in the past, nor performed a preaching campaign here in the past, since he is unknown by face to them, and they have, quote, heard only, unquote, of his claim of conversion. Some of the contradictions are, one, Galatians claims that after his alleged vision, Paul, quote, immediately, unquote, spoke to, quote, no flesh and blood, unquote, but rather traveled to Arabia and then to Damascus. So he did not, quote, straight away, unquote, if all, preach boldly in Damascus as claimed by Acts. How long would it take to travel from Damascus to Arabia to Damascus? Could he go and come back, quote, straight away, unquote? Two, according to Galatians, Paul did not go to Jerusalem where the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, were. Rather, he went to Arabia, then to Damascus. Now, after at least three years, not many days, he goes to Jerusalem. It explicitly states that, quote, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them, them which were apostles, unquote. So this is claimed to be his first visit to Jerusalem after his claimed vision. This first visit is claimed to have occurred at least three years after Paul's alleged vision. However, Acts claims that many days after his vision, he traveled to Jerusalem and performed a bold preaching campaign with all of the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them all. Acts also mentions no inter intermediate journey to Arabia. Three, according to Galatians, upon Paul's arrival in Jerusalem, he met Peter and James, mercy of the Creator be upon them, and no other apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all. He could not have, he could not have met any apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, in Jerusalem, before this, because he claims that immediately after his vision, quote, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles, unquote. Rather, it claims that he first went to Jerusalem at least, quote, three years, unquote, after his claimed vision. On the other hand, Acts claims that the first time he met the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, was many days after his claimed vision, at which time he met all of the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them all. This too is obviously his first meeting with them, since they all feared him. Notice the words, quote, they were all afraid of him, unquote. This would not be the case if Peter and James, mercy of the Creator be upon them, had already met him, since even if they had never mentioned him to the other apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, still, at the very least, they themselves, Peter and James, would not fear him. Also, notice that it was only Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, who stood up for him, and not Barnabas, Peter, and James, mercy of the Creator be upon them. Four. Acts claims that after Paul's first visit to Jerusalem, all of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, feared him. But then Barnabas, mercy of the Almighty be upon him, convinced them to accept him, and they all went hand in hand, quote, in and out of Jerusalem, unquote, preaching, quote, boldly, unquote, to the Jews. However, Galatians claims that his first visit to Jerusalem was after three years. And upon this first visit, he only met Peter and James. Mercy of the Creator be upon them. He has not claimed to have gone with Peter and James. Mercy of the Creator be upon them on a preaching campaign 
in and out of Jerusalem, nor could he have done so in the past with all of the apostles. Mercy of the Creator put me upon them all. Since he, if he had done so, he would not have been, quote, unknown by face to the churches of Judea, unquote. They would also not, quote, heard only, unquote, of his conversions, but would have eyewitnessed his bold campaign with all of the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them all with their own eyes. If the author of the majority of the books of the New Testament cannot even keep the narration of his own, quote, salvation straight, then how are we expected to believe him in such critical matters as the, quote, true, unquote, meaning of Jesus, peace be upon his words, or other matters? The, part, the fact that Paul never actually met Jesus, peace be upon him, during his lifetime, never traveled with him, ate with him, or learned directly from him, would obviously make the apostles of Jesus, peace be upon him, the first source of guidance for those followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, who wish to know what Jesus taught. Jesus, peace be upon him, apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, also did not have a previous history of persecuting his followers. The only reason why anyone might want to bypass the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, to speak to Paul as if Paul began to receive a series of a series of holy visions from Jesus, peace be upon him. The apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon all of them, did not claim to be receiving visions from Jesus, peace be upon him. So obviously, Paul's claims that he was receiving divine visions from Jesus, peace be upon him, would go a long way towards drawing the followers of Jesus, peace be upon them, peace be upon them, away from them and to his interpretation of the message of Jesus, peace be upon him. Paul himself proudly proclaims that he has no need of learning from any human being, not even the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them. He is completely independent of their knowledge, and all he needs is his visions. Quote, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. A quote from Galatians, first chapter, verses 11 and 12. As we shall soon see, a direct result of this unwillingness to receive anything from the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, or to learn from them, resulted in Paul following the sad trend of never being able to verify his claims through the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. It is next to impossible to find Paul quoting Jesus, peace be upon him, when attempting to spread his doctrine. Rather, he always refers to his own personal philosophy based upon, quote, visions, unquote. He claims to be receiving an inspiration from the Holy Ghost. When he would differ with an apostle, mercy of the Creator be upon them, on a given matter, he would not claim to have first-hand knowledge of the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, since he had never met him. Therefore, he found it necessary to always resort to extensive philosophy and then claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, and the Holy Ghost were, quote, inspiring, unquote, this philosophy. As we shall see below, he claimed to have been singled out from among all of mankind to receive visions denied all of the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them, and to have been allowed through this inspiration to gain new converts, quote, quoting him, quote, by all means, a quote. He also would not, he also would claim that, quote, all things are lawful unto me, unquote. The careful reader would notice many other holes in the story of Paul's alleged, quote, conversion, unquote. For instance, in Acts chapter 22, verse 9, Paul claims that when he spoke to Jesus, peace be upon him, those traveling with him, quote, saw the light, unquote, but, quote, 
they heard not the voice, unquote. While in Acts chapter 9, verse 7, those who with Paul are claimed to have, quote, stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, unquote. Don't take my word for it. By all means, quote, prove all things, unquote. The teachings of Christianity as they are known today are built upon the claims of Paul, the author of the majority of the books of the New Testament. He is trusted blindly because he claims to have seen Jesus' peace be upon him in a heavenly vision. To have been vouched for by the apostle Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, and to have met and been accepted by all of the apostles. May the mercy of the Creator be upon all of them. To have preached with all the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, boldly in the name of Jesus, peace be upon them, throughout the land of Judea. And as a result of this, to have endured severe hardship and persecution. However, anyone who would simply read their Bible will find that Paul himself swears in the name of God Almighty that this is a fabrication because the Judea had never even seen his face and had, quote, heard only, unquote, of his alleged conversion. Further, he never met any of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon all of them, save Peter and James, mercy of the Creator be upon them. Even with all of this, the church insists that we interpret the words of Jesus, peace be upon him, within the context of Paul's teachings. Paul wrote, quote, And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he has raised up a Christ. Will be raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter verses 14 and 15. Quote, excuse me. There are so many more similar examples of how Paul openly and blatantly made major changes to the religion of Jesus that flagrantly contradicted both the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and his apostles. May the mercy of the Creator be upon all of them. Another example can be seen in the following analysis. God Almighty commands in the Old Testament, quote, This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and that shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man, child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Genesis 17, chapter, verses 10 through 14. So according to the Old Testament, God himself is telling us that his covenant can only be had through circumcision. The significance of circumcision was also noted in biblical, by biblical scholars as being not merely, merely an external act. Quote, This was his own sign and seal that Israel was a chosen people. Through it, a man's life was linked with great fellowship whose dignity was its high conscience that it must fulfill the purpose of God, unquote. From the Interpreter's Bible, page 613. Circumcision was considered of such critical importance to Jewish faith that they would even violate the Sabbath to circumcise their children 
if the eighth day fell on the Sabbath, quote, and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses, peace be upon him, should not be broken. Are you angry at me because I made a man every whip wall on the Sabbath day? Unquote. From John 7th chapter, 22nd verse. Jesus, peace be upon him himself, was, was circumcised on the eighth day, just like all faithful Jews. Quote, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. Unquote. Luke 2nd chapter, verse 21. John the Baptist, peace be upon him, was also circumcised. This can be found in Luke 1st chapter, 59th verse. After the departure of Jesus, peace be upon him, circumcision became an issue of personal conflict between the apostle Peter, who insisted upon it, preached to Jews only, and Paul, who wanted to do away with it, preached to the non-Jews also. Quote, I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised. A quote from Galatians, second chapter, seventh verse. Paul then goes into great details about how the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, were wrong, and he was right, and how even Barnabas, mercy be upon them, followed in their quote hypocrisy. Unquote, and it was necessary for him to show the apostles, mercy be upon them, the truth. In the King James Version, the actual word used by Paul in Galatians chapter 2, verse 13, is diplomatically translated as dissimulation. Unquote. However, in the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which was compiled from more, from more ancient manuscripts than the King James Version, the word Paul used is honestly translated as, quote, hypocrisy, unquote. Paul now mentions James, the son of thunder, James, the just, Peter, the rock, and Barnabas, Paul's teacher and protector, in the following manner, quote, I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, unquote. This is from Galatians, second chapter, verse 14. So now it becomes apparent from Paul's words that in addition to all the above, the apostles, mercy of the creator be upon them, were all also misguided. It would have been interesting to have heard, for instance, Barnabas, mercy be upon him, version of these matters, had he been chosen as the, quote, majority author, unquote, of the Bible rather than Paul. According to similar passages, it seems that the apostles, mercy of the creator be upon them, were, were constantly in need of Paul's guidance to recognize the truth. To get Barnabas, mercy of the creator be upon him, version of these matters, his opinion of Paul, as well as what really happened at the cross, looked for, quote, the gospel of Barnabas, ISBN 0089295-133-1 at your local library. It is interesting to note that Paul himself was not even sure about his own, quote, visions, unquote. We read, quote, It is expedient for me to boast. Nothing is to be gained by it, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such and one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my mind infirmities. I quote, 2 Corinthians 12, chapter, verses 1 through 5. So Paul did not know if the man, quote, visions, unquote, was, quote, in the body, unquote, unquote, out of the body, unquote. Paul's vision also contained, quote, 
unspeakable words, a quote, which were, quote, not lawful for a man to utter, a quote. If I told you that I had seen someone in a, quote, vision, a quote, had heard, quote, unspeakable words that are not lawful to utter, a quote, in this, in this vision, and had been commanded by this person to nullify the commandments which Jesus, peace be upon him, had upheld his whole life and had commanded mankind to uphold to the end of time. Who would you say this described? Who had I seen? God Almighty says, an attempt to translate the Holy Quran, quote, And if it be said unto them, Follow that which your law has revealed, they say, Nay, but we follow that wherein we found our fathers. What? Even though the devil was inviting them to torture of the fire, unquote. It's from the Noble Quran, Surah Luqman, Miraculous Line 21. What is wrong with this picture? Even if we were to dis disregard Paul's sworn admission of fabrication and were to accept the established beliefs of Paul's inspiration and infallib infallibility, a big if, then we are still left with the following picture. Paul, a man who, according to his own admission, quote, beyond measure, unquote, severely persecuted countless Christians, quote, slaughtered, unquote, them, and also, quote, wasted, unquote, the church, found in Galatians, first chapter, verses 13 through 15, Acts 8 chapter, verses 1 through 3, Acts 9, first chapter, ninth chapter, verses 1 through 2, Acts ninth chapter, Verse 41, Acts 6 chapter, verse 5, etc. A man who never met Jesus, peace be upon him, face to face, underwent a miraculous conversion from a persecutor and killer of Christians, may the Lord have mercy upon them, and to a more perfect teacher of Christianity than the apostles themselves, mercy of the Creator be upon them. He was singled out by Jesus, peace be upon him, ghosts, to receive, quote, visions, unquote, which would deny the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, would accompany Jesus, peace be upon him, during his lifetime. Reference Galatians, first chapter, verses 10 through 12. Paul had acquired such a terrible reputation as a persecution, persecutor of Christians, mercy of the Creator be upon them, that no one was willing to accept his claims of conversion. It was only the intervention of the Apostle Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, whose words obviously carried a great deal of weight with the rest of the Apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, which allowed the Apostles, mercy of the Creator to be upon them, to grudgingly accept him. Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon them, then traveled extensively with Paul, building up his reputation among the Jews as a true convert. Once Paul acquired a reputation of his own. He had a falling out with Barnabas. Reference Acts 15, chapter 39, verse, Galatians 2, chapter 13, verse. They parted company. Paul now claimed that Jesus, peace be upon him, wanted him to, quote, relax, unquote, the law in order to make it a little more palatable for new converts. And this is when Paul began to make drastic changes to the law of Jesus, peace be upon him. Paul decided that his visions were sufficient authority to contradict the teachings of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, and considered them hypocrites. Even Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, the apostle who traveled with Paul, teaching him and preaching to the Jews, who was willing to accept this persecutor of Christians' claims of conversion at face value, and the man who single-handedly Convince all the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, to accept the same persecutor of Christians, mercy of the Creator be upon them all, is now considered by Paul a hypocrite and less able to understand the religion of Jesus, peace be upon him, than himself. Paul also believed that, quote, I labored more abundantly than they, the apostles, all, quote, quoted from 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 10th verse. 
So the apostles of Jesus, peace be upon him, mercy be of the creator be upon the apostles, were such lazy layabouts that Paul was doing more work than all 11 of them put together. All of this, even though the apostles, peace, mercy have be of the creator be upon all of them, spent countless years with Jesus, peace be upon him, learning directly from him, while Paul, who has never met Jesus, peace be upon him, in person, practically overnight trans transforms from a persecutor and killer of Christians, mercy of the creator be upon them, to and the, and the apostles, mercy of the creator be upon them, to a more perfect teacher of Christianity than the apostles themselves. Mercy of the Creator be upon them. It is quite lucky for us that Paul received these, quote, visions, unquote. Otherwise, we might have been led astray by the lazy, misguided, hypocritical apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them. For Barnabas' version of these matters, read the Gospel of Barnabas. Let us take time out for a quick analysis of the above verses. One, Jesus, peace be upon him, during his lifetime on earth, commands mankind to strict, strictly and uncompromisingly observe the religion of Moses, peace be upon him, till the end of time. This is Matthew 5th chapter 18th verse. He tells them that observing the religion of Moses, peace be upon him, and, telling, and selling their belongings shall make them, quote, perfect, unquote, in Luke 18th chapter, verses 18 through 22. Two, after the departure of Jesus, peace be upon him, Paul, according to his own admission, quote, beyond measure, unquote, severely persecuted countless Christians, may the Almighty's mercy be upon them, strove to, quote, slaughter, unquote, them, and also, quote, wasted the church. Reference Galatians, first chapter, verses 13 through 15. Acts, eighth chapter, verses 1 through 3. Acts, ninth chapter, verses 1 and 2. Acts, ninth chapter, verse 41. Acts, sixth chapter, verse 5. Acts, 22nd chapter, verse 4, etc. Paul also looked on with satisfaction at the apostle Stephen, mercy of the Creator be upon him, was stoned to death. Acts 22, chapter, verse 20. Three, Paul received, receives, quote, visions, unquote, and is saved. Acts 22, verse 9, Acts 9, verse 7, etc. For Paul is not sure exactly what he saw in his visions. His visions also contain, quote, unspeakable words that it is unlawful to utter, unquote. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through, tw through 5. 5. Paul tells us that the person in his visions was Jesus, peace be upon him. He declares that he, that he received his teachings of Christ quote, Christianity, unquote, from these visions and from no one else, not even the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them. Galatians, first chapter, verse 12. In other words, he has no need of learning from the apostles. Mercy of the Creator be upon them all. His visions are higher in authority than anything they might have to say. He then goes on to show everyone how the apostles of Jesus, peace be upon him, mercy of the Creator be upon the apostles, are constantly in need of his guidance to recognize the truth. Reference Galatians, second chapter, verses 11 and through 13. Six, Paul claims that all things are made lawful to him and he shall not follow anyone. First Corinthians, chapter six, verse 12. He also claims that he shall do whatever it takes to get people to follow him, no matter what that might entail. 1 Corinthians 9th chapter, verses 20, 21, and 22. And I will pause here and read those particular verses. 1 Corinthians 9th chapter, verses 20 and 21. Quote, quoting from Paul, 
and unto the Jews, I came as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law, to them that are without law as without law, that I may gain them that are without law. To the weak became I that I may gain them that are weak, that I may gain the weak. I am all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Unquote. Going back to the text. Seven, the apostles differ with Paul regarding, quote, the truth, unquote, of the circumcision ordained by God in other matters. In 1 Corinthians, second chapter, 19th verse. Galatians, second chapter, 7th verse. Eight, the apostles Mercy be upon them, according to Paul, did not walk, quote, uprightly, unquote, according to the truth of the gospel, quote, did not walk, quote, uprightly, unquote, according to the, quote, truth of the gospel, and were lazy, misguided, hypocrites. Reference 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Galatians 2 chapter, verse 14. Galatians 2 chapter, verse 13. Most of the books, nine, most of the books of the New Testament were written by Paul himself. In them, Paul himself gives an unblushing pronouncement of how he was a vastly superior apostle of Jesus, peace be upon him, than the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, who accompanied Jesus, peace be upon him, during his ministry. And they all needed his guidance to see the, quote, truth, unquote, of Jesus, peace be upon him, message, and how Jesus, peace be upon him, and the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, eagerly appointed him the twelve apostles. Summary. If the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, who lived, preached, ate, and drank with Jesus, peace be upon him, for so many years are all, according to Paul, lazy, misguided, hypocrites, who are not able to see the, quote, truth, unquote, of Jesus, peace be upon him, message, as clearly as himself. And if Paul would never meant Jesus, peace be upon him in the flesh, but as the author of the majority of our New Testament, is more truly guided than all of the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them combined because of his claim, quote, visions, a quote, even though he never quotes Jesus, peace be upon him, nor needs to learn from the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, but is, according to his own gospel, more truly guided than all of them, despite all of this, then why did Jesus, peace be upon him, need to preach the law of Moses, peace be upon him, to mankind at all? Why did he himself observe it strictly? According to Paul, Jesus, peace be upon him, only use is as a body to be hung on a cross. Jesus, peace be upon him, felt it necessary to command his followers to strictly and uncompromisingly observed the law of Moses. He even felt it necessary to live his life in strict observance of this law as a supreme example for them. He never once explicitly mentioned an original sin, an atonement, a crucifixion, a redemption, or a nullification of the law of Moses, peace be upon him. However, no sooner does Jesus, peace be upon him, depart this earth that Paul uses his claimed visions to completely nullify everything Jesus, peace be upon him, ever taught and practiced. He does not need to learn from the apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them. All he needs is his visions. That is indeed why he almost never quotes Jesus, peace be upon him himself. He always resorts to his own philosophy rather than quoting Jesus, peace be upon him. Why then did Jesus, peace be upon him, simply not come to earth right after Adam sinned, not, not say a single word, quickly anger some enemies of God, let them crucify him and have it, have it over with quickly? Even if Jesus decided to wait hundreds of thousands of years and only come 2,000 years ago, then why preach a law 
that is going to be thrown out of the window in a couple of years. Why observe this law so devoutly himself? Why command everyone to strictly observe the law, quote, to heaven and earth pass, unquote? Why threaten them that anyone who would forsake a single commandment would be called, quote, the least in the kingdom of heaven, unquote? Is he not going to die for everyone's sin and then come back in exclusive visions to Paul and command him to nullify the law of Moses? Peace be upon him. Is he not going to come back in visions of Paul and command him to tell everyone that, quote, a man is justified by flesh without the deeds of law, unquote? Why not preach such a doctrine himself while he is still among the apostles? Mercy of the Creator be upon him. Instead of waiting to first mention it to Paul in a vision after his death. These apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon him, that Paul looked down upon as lazy, misguided hypocrites are the self-seen apostles, mercy of the Creator be upon them, who had accompanied Jesus, peace be upon him, during his lifetime who taught all of mankind, including Paul himself, the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, who had endured the persecution of many, including Paul himself, to convey this message without compromise, as Jesus, peace be upon him, had directly taught it to them. The Pauline church, the Roman Catholic church, which later gave birth to other churches, such as the Protestant church, was to later go on and officially adopt the doctrine of the Trinity a couple of centuries after the departure of Jesus, peace be upon him, to severely condemn, persecute, and kill any Christians who did not convert to their own personal brand of Christianity, to have presided over the death of millions of Christians who did not, did not adopt this belief, to have presided over the destruction of many hundreds of, quote, unacceptable, quote, gospels issued a push public ban that they not be read either public or privately and to have established very severe penalties for, for all those found concealing them. Such men as Nanasius died 373 CE and Raphinius died 410 Christian era used the word apocrypha, meaning hidden books, to describe all such books not accepted by them. Even with all this, the gospel of Barnabas, may the Almighty have mercy upon him, has managed to escape this campaign of destruction of the gospels and is available today. It confirms all that we have said and what the Quran has been saying for centuries. It also presents Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, response to Paul's claims and his account of what truly happened at the cross and how Jesus, peace be upon him, was not forsaken by God to the Jews, was raised up by God, and Judas the traitor was made to look like Jesus, peace be upon him, and was taken in his place. Barnabas, mercy of the Creator be upon him, of course, accompanied Jesus, peace be upon him, and was an eyewitness to his mission. Now I will read for you the introduction to the Gospel of Barnabas. The great apostle, apostle of Jesus, peace be upon him, Barnabas, the defender of the bene and benefactor of Paul, in the opening statements of his gospel, has the following to say about Paul, among others. Quote, the gospel of Jesus, called Messiah, a new prophet sent by God to the world, according to the description of Barnabas, his apostle, Barnabas. Peace be upon him, apostle of Jesus the Nazarene, called Messiah, to all them that dwell upon the earth desire peace and consolation. Truly, beloved, the great and wonderful God has in these past days visited us by his apostle Jesus, peace be upon him, the Messiah, in great mercy of teaching and miracles, by reason whereof many, being deceived by Satan, under pretense of piety, are preaching most impious doctrine, calling Jesus the Son of God, repudiating the circumcision ordained by God forever, and per permitting every unclean meat, among whom also Paul has been deceived, whereof I speak not without grief, 
For which cause I am writing the truth which I have seen and heard and the fellowship that I have had with Jesus, peace be upon him, in order that you may be saved and not be deceived by Satan and perish in judgment of God. Therefore, beware of everyone that preaches to you a new doctrine contrary to that which I write, that you may be saved eternally. The great God be with you and guard you from Satan and from every evil I be. The final revelation and law and guidance of the Almighty Creator is Islam. What is Islam? The basic principles of Islam are 11. To bear witness that there is no God but Allah, which means the Almighty Creator, who is unique and there is nothing comparable to Him. To bear witness that Muhammad, son of Abdullah, who lived 1400 years ago, is his final prophet and messenger. To believe in all of the original pure books that were revealed to the prophets, that received revealed books, such as the Torah to Moses, peace be upon him, the Injil or Gospel to Jesus, peace be upon him, the Zabor to David, and the final revelation, the Holy Quran that was sent to the final messenger, our master Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him and his family. To believe in all of the prophets, messengers, sent by the Almighty Creator to many nations over time. There were over 120,000 prophets sent to various nations and people. To believe in the angels, peace be upon them, who are usually not seen. There is one over your right shoulder that records your good deeds. There is one over your left shoulder that records your bad deeds. There is one that will take your soul to death. The angels, peace be upon them, have many functions. They bring the rain, the snow, the wind, etc., and cannot, they cannot sin. To believe in the day of judgment. This is a day when all human beings who have ever lived will see and stand before our almighty creator. He will then judge us based upon our good and bad deeds in this life. Those that worshiped him and followed his commandments to the best of their capacity, asking for and gaining his forgiveness. He will reward with happiness and nearest to him forever in paradise. Those that rejected him and chose evil to spread corruption on the earth, he will punish them forever in hell. To believe in predestination, that everything happens according to the plan of the Almighty Creator. If your heart accepts these principles, your Lord is inviting you to accept His final guidance, Islam. For more information, you may call me at 434 610 5626. 434 610 5626. Thank you for listening to our program. Mankind is the family of God. When we join together like this, it helps to clear up all the doubts. When we join together like this, we welcome you to this humble house. When we join together like this, spread joy and peace, no need to pout. When we join together like this, it shows what love is all about Set aside our differences And let us give love a chance What we do will define tomorrow Don't let peace slip through your hands Set aside our differences And let us give love a chance What we do will define tomorrow Don't let peace slip through your hands People, tell your fathers, tell your sons Tell those you love and everyone Don't ever stop when the immediate task is done Disparity is on the run open your hearts up to the truth don't let their lies bamboozle you right here right now we're living proof we're all defined by what we do we're all defined by what we do set aside our differences and let us give love a chance what we do will define tomorrow don't let peace slip through your hands set aside our differences and let us give love a chance what we do will define
find tomorrow Don't let me slip through your hands We share the same legacy, me and you Muslims and Christians, even Jews All of God's prophets brought the truth I'm only here to spread the news